Hey everyone, this is Justin Kendall, the editor of Brewbound, and joining me via Google Hangout is Ryan Lake, a principal at Arlington Capital Advisors. If you're unfamiliar with Arlington, uh, you should know them because last year they advised on two of the biggest transactions in the beer industry, the merger of Boston Beer and Dogfish Head, as well as the acquisition of New Belgium by Kieran-owned Lion Little World Beverages. Ryan, uh, to describe the last few weeks as chaos is probably a, an understatement. Um, <laughs> we, we've seen... I think the last few days have been, have been chaos is an understatement. Yeah. And it, it's cha everything's changing so fast. So yeah. I guess, is your phone ringing off the hook right now? Yeah, I mean, we were we were busy before all of this uh, all of this calamity really cranked up, but um, we've certainly gotten busier in a, in a different way. I would say. Um, I mean, we had a lot of deal activity prior to this. Um, a lot of our calls recently have been not so much deal related, but just trying to be a a helpful industry partner to a lot of our clients and friends out there that are obviously concerned about what's happening, what's happened, what might happen. Um, so we're trying to be at this point, you know, a calm voice of reason. We're trying to also be as helpful as we possibly can to all of our friends and our clients out there. Um, in some cases, that's meant being sort of a de facto outsourced CFO um, for clients that need help working on cash flow projection and modeling and seeing what the next few months might look like for them, what they might need to do in terms of either cost savings or capital reinforcement to get through this. Um, sometimes it's just talking to them to help them bounce ideas off of people or comparing notes about what we're seeing around the world in craft beer and compare it to what they're seeing. So they have someone at least a, an ear uh, to listen to and, and to feel like they're not fighting this all on their own. Um, I think you know, everyone is everyone is collectively sort of adjusting and reacting. And I think you know, everyone's trying not only survive, but I think a lot of people are also trying to to help the collective for the greater good. Um, whether that's making hand sanitizer or that's you know lending out your bartenders and on-premise employees to to grocery stores uh, to help them merchandise. I think everyone's trying to do whatever they can to do the right thing and to also survive this. And we're trying to to in the same way help our our friends and our clients to get through this however they can. So w when you're getting these calls. Um, no, What's the sense, I guess, you're getting from people who are, are in fact, looking to transact? Are, is there a sense of, I don't know if desperation is like a, a strong word, but is this, you know, kind of a moment where we're hearing from people that we probably wouldn't have heard from if we rewind two weeks ago and people are now in a financial position that they're really being forced to make a move? Yeah, there's some of that for sure. There's definitely, I think, some people considering their options right now that either didn't plan on selling for a while or maybe never. Um, I think there are a lot of business owners and brewery owners that were already considering it, and it's maybe accelerating those thoughts. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's all over the board. I mean, we're getting people. I mean, certainly, I don't think anyone's really contacting us from a position of feeling like it's time to get a record multiple. Um, a lot of them are doing so. They want to protect their employees however they can. Obviously, everyone's concerned about about their employees right now, especially the ones that have a lot of a lot of on-premise employees or employees that are exposed to that channel. And you know, I think they're all trying to do the right thing. They're trying to find the, the best way that they can protect the most employees they can, um, which is obviously you know the primary concern for a lot of these businesses as it should be. What would you say the the type of client you're getting a call from now is? How big are we talking about? Is it across the board or is it, you know, is it a range? It's a it's a big range so far. I mean, again, I think it's it's still sort of early days for when the crisis is really set in. So I think the next few weeks will be interesting to see how that evolves. But it's already been a pretty big range um, in terms of of size, in terms of business models. You know, whether they're mostly distribution versus mostly tap room versus mostly DTC. Um, we're, we're talking to people all across the spectrum. One of the things that I, I obviously was wrong about is I, I thought that this would really slow down activity. And I, I, I guess I came from a perspective of thinking that more buyers would be wary. Um, are, are you getting a sense that that's the case? Or are you getting a sense that people are actually looking at four deals to, to make purchases? It's hard to say. I mean, we're in the early innings of feeling out what the buyer's appetites are. I mean, we're having conversations with buyers every day to figure out how they're feeling about things and what their capacity is. And obviously, even for them, that's changing sort of in real time. Um, 
It definitely, I wouldn't say there's an avalanche of buyers reaching out to us. We definitely talk to a few that are looking for, 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 you know, relatively good deals right now on, on really compelling brands. Um, but at the same time, you know, a lot of the buyers that we're talking to are still, uh, not necessarily skittish, but they're trying to feel out their own resources right now and how their own businesses are performing. So I think, you know, the next few weeks will be sort of indicative for some of these companies to see not only how the whole situation shakes out, but what their own capacity to do deals is and their own interest. Um, You know, everyone is pretty internally focused for the moment, it seems like. Um, obviously this thing has a global implication. So even the biggest multinational strategics are, are, are feeling out the impacts of their business in different parts of the world in real time. And, uh, you know, I think there, there may be some appetite for deals. You know, I think that, you know, it's not an ideal time to be a seller necessarily, but that being said, you know, great brands will always find acquirers. Um, as long as consumers love them, acquirers will like them too. Um, but, you know, the, the, the buyers are definitely still sort of figuring out the landscape just as we are and just as all the craft brewery owners are. How have the uh, qualities that a buyer is potentially looking for changed in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's again, the, the near to midterm are hard to say, I think, in the very short term, obviously. Um, you know, I think for the last few years in craft beer, I think having an overexposure to things like tap rooms and direct to customer sales have been a big positive. Um, you know, obviously in the last two or three weeks, that's really been flipped on its head. Suddenly the brands that have more exposure to distribution and to off premise are faring better in the, in the, in the recent weeks In the next one to two months, who knows how that turns. Um, but it's certainly, I think it definitely probably has changed everyone's viewpoint on, you know, what was previously considered a real source of strength that in the short term might be a real weakness. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we just got the numbers from Nielsen and IRI and Bump uh, Williams Consulting has sort of broken them down. And it sounds like a lot of the brands that have struggled in recent years, Sierra Nevada Pale, Boston Lager, those brands are are actually on the upswing now as people. Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light, all growing <laughs> suddenly. Well, when you get a message that all segments uh, are growing, uh, that's yeah. that's a message that I haven't seen since I've been at Brewbound, and yeah, it, it it definitely feels like a different time. And that's not to say, I mean, clearly we're talking because things got flipped on their head, and not everything is okay, you know. And yep. obviously, the on premise has been taken away from so many, and with that, you know, the the smaller players are struggling uh, as. They've lost their tap rooms. They've lost tasting room opportunities. And now they're looking for e-commerce act opportunities, direct deliveries. And, and I, I, we were talking before this call, um, they're looking at looser, looser laws. And yep. uh, I guess from that perspective, do you see some of those loosening of the, the laws? Do you, do you see that sticking? Are we going to be able to pull back what we've sort of given I would be very surprised if all the laws get pulled back. Like you and I were discussing before the call, as you said, I mean, once consumers get access to some of these things, and once I think um, once I think they realize that the world doesn't fall apart because some of these laws were changed temporarily, I think a lot of these laws, or at least a, a decent amount, will end up sticking. Um, and I think, you know, I think that I think obviously these are these are unprecedented sort of extraordinary times. But I would be surprised if you could put the genie back in the bottle on some of these law changes. We've seen a number of private equity firms get into this, a number of family offices. And I guess my my curiosity on this is, does this potentially accelerate uh, them seeking an exit out of these type of deals that they've already gotten into in the past? I don't know if it accelerates anything for them. I mean, certainly, you know, any rational seller in this environment, if you could get a deal that was attractive, you'd probably consider it. But at the same time, I would say a lot of those, a lot of those private equity and family offices that have backed craft brewers, um, and the flip side, they have a lot of, of resources to give to those craft brewers just in terms of, of financial sophistication, of helping them really analyze what their cost structure is, what's necessary, what isn't, how do you be creative um, just to manage your cost to get through times like these. I think that's you know one thing that um, I think we at Arlington have seen over the past, you know, I don't know, years in craft beer have seen there's been a general lack of financial sophistication among all crafts to some extent. Some of the larger ones excluded, but sometimes not. Um, 
And I think, you know, a lot of crafts right now are figuring out very quickly. Um, <laughs> they're getting to know their business financially in the way they never have before because they haven't had to. And I think everyone would be would be behooved to to if you don't understand your cost structure and your cost base, you need to figure it out real quick and you understand what expenses you really have to keep incurring and what you don't and where you can get creative and generating revenue. Um, because I think the ones that, that have the ability and the knowledge to pivot quickly in terms of cost and in terms of revenue generation are the ones that are best positioned to survive this. What are some of those pivots that you think craft brewers should be uh, considering at this time? Well, I think there's a bunch of things. I mean, again, I think we've seen, you know, some, a lot of, there's already been a lot of furloughs and layoffs in the on-premise, which is unfortunate, but inevitable given the crisis, you know, we have seen some craft brewers do creative things like um, helping those, those people get temporary jobs with grocery stores, delivery companies, whatever they can to help them put them in the channels that are seeing increased volume so they can keep getting a paycheck. And it also helps their distributor and retail partners too, to keep putting product on the shelves. Um, so the system keeps moving. So I've seen, seen things like that. You know, obviously we've talked to a lot of craft brewers that are already talking to their lenders and landlords about getting some sort of payment relief for the next month or two, at least, um, just to make sure that, you know, they have money to pay payroll first, um, and then prioritize everything else sort of after that. Um, but, you know, again, I think we're going to, I think we're going to see more creative solutions than we've already seen. Um, I've already been impressed at how quickly people have found ways to either generate revenue or save money that I wouldn't have necessarily thought of that quickly. But when you're in a, a crisis mode and necessity hits, um, you're seeing some very smart people do creative things. Yeah. Uh, we talked a little bit about multiples and obviously not the best time for this. W what are you hearing or what are you seeing as far as that goes? How has this affected that? It's obviously too early on the downswing. Yeah. I mean, it's too early to say, I mean, I, we, I can't say we've had, you know, an offer made in a client since things really gotten, had gotten crazy. So I think the next, you know, few weeks, next couple months will sort of be telltale for that. I mean, you know, it's never ideal uh, if you're a seller to go to market in an environment like this. Um, but like I said before, you know, great brands will always find, will always find homes, um, even in times of crisis and even in times when the economy is challenged. Um, so time will tell what the multiples actually do. But, you know, we still have a big belief that great brands um, are the future and can, will continue to be. And there will be buyers for those you know, if they need it. Yeah. And I guess uh, what the... I'll, I'll leave you at this. Um, what is sort of the biggest need that you're hearing out there in the market right now? I mean, the biggest need is revenue. I mean, again, you can't, if you're, if you're a craft brewer owner, for the most part, it's hard to cut cost fast enough to offset the revenue losses you're seeing in the on-premise, especially. Um, you know, everyone is scrambling to try to find a way to sell that next case, that next four pack, that next 24 pack of beer. Um, because that's really what keeps the lights on in times like these. And I think, you know, I think the beer business is fortunate um, to have the power of, of the beer distribution model behind them. Um, I think, you know, there's obviously been, you know, there's been uh, <laughs> contentious times in the past and there's things they disagree on. But I think when you see the power of uh, the U.S. beer distribution system to keep shelves uh, replenished, even in times like this, um, it's impressive. And that's definitely put a lot more uh, cases of beer, people shopping carts than you would have otherwise would have seen. Um, so I think that, you know, they're fortunate to have that. I think, again, the fact state laws have changed so quickly, at least temporarily, to allow things like delivery and direct sales in states where they previously weren't. Um, I think all that's helpful. But I think, you know, this is a time where craft brewers need to understand their cost at a very granular level. Um, and they need to be creative in finding every, every you know, case of beer they can sell uh, in the next few weeks to make sure they keep they keep running things and keep the lights on as much as they possibly can. I think that's pretty great advice to end it on. So thanks, Ryan. I appreciate it. Yeah, the thanks time, for man. having me. Yep, stay safe. <laughs>